Good morning. The time is 531 on October 15th. I'm Madison Pergram. And I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning on this Tuesday. It's a little chilly outside, so mm -hmm. they might want to grab a coat, but it feels it feels good. It's refreshing. <sighs> it is extremely refreshing. <laughs> I love every second. Well, let's go to meteorologist Kelly McShane. Kelly, is it going to warm up a little bit throughout the afternoon like we saw yesterday? Yeah, it's actually going to be a lot like yesterday. We may throw in a few more clouds into the mix, but overall, we're looking at another beautiful day for us here in the mountains. But like yesterday, a chilly start, so be sure to grab the jacket and make it a warm one, especially if you live in the valleys. We're looking at upper 30s to lower 40s for those valley locations, but check it out 42 in Hazard and 51 in Jackson. That's what that Ridge Valley split will do to some of us waking up in those upper 40s to lower 50s, and that's because we've had those clear skies overnight, so that's why those temperatures are a little bit on the chillier side this morning. But as far as fog goes, it's not looking like we're seeing too many reduced visibility areas, so overall not looking too bad this morning, but it is a little bit of a chilly start. But this afternoon will be feeling pretty nice. And we do have some rain on the way. I'll map that out here in just a little bit, guys. All righty, Kelly. Thank you, ma'am. Well, deputies in Laurel County say they arrested two people in their early 20s on possession of heroin and methamphetamine. It all happened off of West Cumberland Gap Parkway Saturday night. Deputies say these two people, 22-year-old Rebecca Welch and 20-year-old Ian Tyler, were found in a car with heroin, meth, and a large amount of cash. The two were taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. And a woman in Breathitt County is in custody, charged with assault and endangering the welfare of a minor. Savannah Combs allegedly beat her neighbor repeatedly and hit her in the head with a lamp. According to the arrest citation, the victim says during the attack, Combs also accidentally hit the victim's child. The victim had multiple face injuries and a possible broken cheekbone. Combs is being held in the Three Forks Regional Jail. The Floyd County Sheriff's Department is investigating a motorcycle theft that happened while the owner was having surgery. It happened in the Mud Creek area. A man says he came home to the locks broken on his garage and his motorcycle missing. WYMT's Marion Fletcher tells us why he is warning others to be careful what they post online. A missing motorcycle has one Floyd County man frustrated. I come home and my locks was broken on my garage and uh, my bike was gone while under the knife for appendix surgery. Jordan Kahn's garage was vandalized and his motorcycle stolen. A man's in such a bad shape and goes to the hospital and then comes back and his stuff's stolen. It's a red Yamaha V-Star Classic 650. It's a classic. It was just uh, a nice bike. Kahn says more than one person may be involved because the bike was pulled across his lawn while in gear. It's hard to replace anyways. I mean, much less, you know, uh, you're in the hospital and something bad happens and people come steal your things. Now he is warning others about posting on social media. Don't let nobody what you know what you have. I mean, you know, if they know that it's there and they possibly can get to it if you're not home, you know, I mean, be, be more secure about things. Don't let people know that you're leaving home. And he hopes telling his story will lead to the return of his bike in Floyd County. Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Jordan Kahn is offering a $400 reward for anyone with information leading to his motorcycle. You can also contact the Floyd County Sheriff's Department with any information. A man accused of killing his father-in-law, then kidnapping his wife, shutting down schools in Jackson County, and setting off a statewide manhunt appeared in court yesterday. 37-year-old Terry Whitehouse was arrested in Shelby County Friday more than 36 hours after police say he killed Marvin Bowman at an eminence home and kidnapped Melinda Whitehouse. She was found safe. White House had just been released from jail the day before the murder on domestic violence charges. He is now charged with murder, kidnapping, and violating a protective order. White House's bond is set at $1 million. And a Woodford County man accused of stabbing his wife more than two dozen times, then fleeing to southern Indiana, was arraigned yesterday on assault charges. Kenneth McDaniel was arrested in Floyd County, Indiana. It happened October 6 at their home in Woodford County. Katie called 911 and officers arrived to find her on the bedroom floor, bleeding profusely. Sergeants say Katie was stabbed 26 times and could still die from her injuries. Kenneth McDaniel is charged with first degree assault. Last month, police say a man shot his brother in Johnson County. Now the accused shooter is out of jail. Joseph Fannin, the one who pulled the trigger, was released from jail last week without having to pay any bond. 
Those close to David Fannin, the victim, are upset with his brother's release. We're angry. Um, it's not fair. Uh, Joe gets to walk around, do whatever he wants, go where he wants, while David's been in the hospital fighting for his life, and it's, it's not fair. Johnson County's court clerk says Joseph Fannin was released with no bond on the condition that he, quote, had no more violations of law. And a Perry County murder trial could soon move to a new county. Yesterday, a judge declared mistrial in the case of James McIntosh. He is the man charged with shooting Danny Mullins multiple times earlier this year. During jury selection yesterday morning, attorneys failed to seat a jury, leading to the mistrial. McIntosh's attorney plans to file a motion for a change of venue on Thursday. It's now been 10 years since a man vanished from his home in Casey County and his family still says they don't know what happened. The family says they are certain Charles Randolph did not survive what happened outside of his home on Kentucky 501 near Kings Mountain. His neighbors say they saw him getting into a white SUV. His family says they don't believe he went with those people willingly. They found a necklace of his that was okay. in the front yard at someone that felt like they jerked it off his neck is what we feel like. We loved him so much, yeah. and Mom loved him so much. That was her baby. Several years ago, his family did put up a headstone, and they are in the process of declaring Charles Randolph legally dead without a body. The family raised more than $4,000 for a reward, but the family says that will be donated to a search and rescue crew if Randolph is not found by the end of this year. And in Wayne County, a man is dead after a crash on Kentucky 1275 in Monticello. It happened early Sunday morning, and state police say Michael Bridgman was thrown from his Jeep after losing control and hitting an embankment. He was not wearing a seatbelt. A new meeting has been scheduled for unemployed black jewel miners. Attorney Ned Pillersdorf says the meeting will update miners on the progress of negotiations and explain how to address creditor claims forms. It is currently scheduled for Thursday, October 24th at the Appalachian Citizens Law Center in Whitesburg. And an unsafe amount of E. coli, along with other issues, were found in some of Letcher County streams. For, for, for two years, a handful of organizations have been testing multiple streams in the North Folk of the Kentucky River watershed in Letcher County. WYMT's Connor James talked with those who conducted the test about what happens now. The streams that flow here may be small, but as the water continues to trickle, these streams carve mountains. Yeah, it's definitely an educational project, I would say. Caitlin Myers has spent the better part of two years with these streams. She is one of two people with the nonprofit Headwaters, collecting water samples from three areas in Ledger County. Uh, we sampled at eight different sites throughout Cross Collie, Dry Fork, and Sand Lake Creeks. Yeah, so we found that for, for most, uh, all of the creeks that were sampled, they did exceed uh, the limit to, that protects against a, uh, a primary recreational use, which would be like a swimming, as well as a secondary recreational use. Steve Evans is with the Kentucky Water Resources Research Institute. The water tested showed a handful of major issues. They test for three main categories. One is bacterial issues um, arising from sewage. Which there was a lot of. The water is essentially unsafe to touch. They also test the mine runoff and the erosion and sedimentation. There were issues there too. The hope of Monday's forum with the public was to help focus on what could come next. That helps us to gauge where they need to put solutions on the ground and uh, you know how many residences would need to be addressed in these various areas. So it gives us some focus areas. As they hope to be able to implement some fixes to the issue. Now, presenters say it is estimated 34 people with untreated sewage need to be addressed. And three Kentucky Democrats are looking to beef up ethics and election laws here in the Commonwealth. The proposed bills would put stronger ethics laws in place for personal and political use of the state plane. It's in response to Governor Matt Bevin's use of the plane during his time in office. We'll take a closer look at the proposed legislation at 630 right here on Mountain News this morning. It is now crunch time for the candidates. Former White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders was in Louisville yesterday to support Governor Bevin. This is the time when candidates try to get the party faithful energized to not only vote, but get others to vote as well. Over the last couple of years, I've had the great opportunity to get to know your governor. Uh, you could not ask for a better person to be fighting for Kentucky. Um, he has been a stalwart supporter of the president. 
Andy Bashir's campaign also found strength in yesterday. They released a new ad featuring former candidate Rocky Atkins in a clear push for voters in what could be this campaign's battleground, Eastern Kentucky. Rocky Atkins overwhelmingly won Eastern Kentucky in the, in the last election. Both candidates were in the region this past weekend. And a Manhattan bar has some graffiti on the wall that could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Temperatures today will be above average, but changes are coming tomorrow. I have those details in my forecast coming up next.